I've had a Logitech X56 for almost two years at this point. When it worked, it was wonderful and I did actually like to use it. The amount of problems the joystick had, however, are multiple and I'm going to tell you some of these issues that I had personally encountered with my usage of the Logitech X56. If you're looking for a quick answer, I would say no. The Logitech X56 is just not worth buying until Logitech at least changes the design or brings out something better at the price point of 250 US dollars. The amount of headache that this joystick can cause to someone is probably not worth it, especially at the price point of $250 where you can get much better joysticks around the same price range and for a little bit more even turn those into a HOTAS. Anyways, I'm going to be going over some of the things that I actually liked about this joystick or HOTAS system compared to what I did not like about this HOTAS system. And believe me when I say it, there are more things that I did not like about this than I actually did like. So anyways, let's get into the video. All right, first thing I'm going to begin with is what I liked about the X56. The biggest selling point for that HOTAS is the multitude of buttons, hats, mini sticks, and controls you get for the price. At the price they sell the joystick for, you're getting the most bang for your buck in terms of the amount of buttons and controls you actually get. The main joystick itself has an 8-way POV alongside two 4-way hats. It also has an extra button on the front alongside a button for your index finger, a single stage trigger, a pinky button, and a pinky lever type switch in front of that, and a mini stick. The throttle comes with a multitude of switches and buttons, but I'm not going to bother listing them. If you want to check those out, you can probably find it on their website or look at a picture of the actual system, which I'll put up now. But otherwise, if you were looking for the cheapest option that had the most switches for your use case, I'd probably say the X56 would be the most appealing option compared to the other options available in its price range, like the Thrustmaster T16000M FCS HOTAS, the Logitech X52, and Pro Variants. The amount of buttons you get is great and will provide you with an excellent level of control for whatever craft you might be flying, be it space or flight. The separation of the joystick and throttle to their own USBs is really nice, as this means that if you say your X56 failed after a few years, like the joystick for example, you could just replace it with a different standalone joystick rather than having to buy the same exact one. It is important to note though that Logitech does not sell them separately, so if you wanted to buy the joystick only you would not be able to do that and you would need to buy the entire set over again. The switches on the joystick are actually quite clicky and feel very nice to use. They have audible clicks and they don't feel mushy or otherwise not nice to use in general. For example, using the lever switch in front of the pinky, pinky switch is satisfying and actually has a really nice click when you push it in. I honestly really like that about it. Sadly, that's all I have for the good things about this HOTAS. The rest of it is just bad news. I'll begin with the ergonomics of the joystick. Unless you have large hands, this joystick is not going to be very comfortable for you to use. The buttons on the top of the joystick can become hard to reach, especially the topmost four-way hat, which sometimes becomes very hard for me to reach, even with decently sized hands. Smaller hands will struggle even more with the joystick as it becomes harder to reach the buttons at the top. At some points, I found my thumb hurting from trying to reach the highest, the hat switch at the highest point. The throttle is fine on ergonomics, though it can be really hard to move due to excessive amounts of grease put by the factory. The scroller wheel on the throttle operated by your pinky is not actually a scroller or encoder, but it's more of just a momentary button which feels like a letdown considering options like even the TWCS throttle have an actual axis there compared to just being a momentary switch or button. One of the larger issues with the joystick itself is the slop in the center or the kind of play, the little bit of wiggle that you can do in the center. This is due to how the joystick was actually designed with interchangeable springs, leaving this dead zone in the center that has no friction or response whatsoever and just moves freely with even the slightest nudge. It gets really annoying and frustrating to use, especially if you need finite controls for specific use cases such as air refueling where you need to make very precise movements which can become difficult on the X56. The main reason being that there is still control response in that kind of little area of play, which can ruin a lot of those precise movements that you're trying to make. 
Sure, you could set a dead zone in that area for the joystick, but this shouldn't be a problem that exists in a $250 HOTAS. You're paying $250 for a product like this, and yet you're getting this slop in the center, which makes it impossible to use sometimes for those precise movements. Like if you think about it, you're, you have this little area where you have not much sensitivity at all. It just kind of moves whenever, and then it starts get, giving you resistance, and it can make it really hard to get used to that. But you could get used to it if you wanted to. But I just find for $250, you should be getting better than that. One of my larger issues I have is with the throttle, and that is it will simply just begin to either decrease or increase on its own. This issue is highly dependent on chance, as it only happens to some throttles, such as mine. The throttle begins to creep under its own weight towards 100%. Now this is not normally going to be a major issue in something like a combat simulator, such as Elite Dangerous or uh, DCS World even, maybe? Except for some very specific use cases, I guess, such as air refueling in DCS. It also hinders my any ability that I had to use Airbus aircraft in civil flight simulators because the throttle would just move on its own and then eventually knock itself out of the climb mode and put you into man manual throttle or even toga. Now that's a serious issue because sometimes you'll just be monitoring anything else on the systems or doing VAT sim and you're on communications and all of a sudden your throttle just goes out of climb into toga and all of a sudden you're increasing speed for no reason. It's a serious issue that should be addressed by Logitech, yet they have not addressed it. My greatest complaint of the joystick stems from a serious issue that can actually hamper your gameplay entirely and make the HOTAS unusable. It stems from either a defect in the wiring or a serious power draw issue from the throttle. It manifests itself as ghosting, which is when certain actions are performed by the joystick when no input was sent from the button. For example, you could be moving your throttle like usual only to find that your landing gear has randomly come out or your boost button was pressed in something like Elite Dangerous, sending you flying into the wall of a docking station. A lot of these issues stem from how this HOTAS came to fruition. The HOTAS was originally designed by SciTech who was purchased by Madcats and most products made by SciTech were supervised by them. Madcats did not have good quality control and a lot of the quality control issues could not be resolved due to the issues that plagued SciTech products in general. Later on, Logitech had gained ownership of the SciTech brand and all of the products related to SciTech and then they started selling them as SciTech and then later rebranding them to Logitech products. The problem is that Logitech had never actually sorted out many of the issues that plagued the SciTech products and just gave them a new coat of paint and began to sell them. This means you could have to go through many RMAs before you can get an at least acceptable product. And for anyone that says, oh you just need to buy a powered USB hub or you need to just get a USB uh, PCIe adapter card, that seems like nonsense considering I already paid 250 US dollars for this product. They don't even state this as a requirement when you're buying the joystick itself. It's not staying in the manual or it's not staying on their website. Why it's not being stated is kind of odd. At least if they stated it, you would understand, okay, I might have to buy more equipment. However, them not stating it just makes you sit in this limbo where you bought the product and it's not working like it should, but you can't get a refund on it because the 30 day period or whatever passed and now they're just kind of telling you, eh, funny, good luck, I guess. And my motherboard isn't the one that's the problem. It's a $400 motherboard. It should be able to perfectly handle something like this. The only solution I found to this ghosting issue was if you were to plug in the joystick into the USB 2.0 port and then plug in your throttle into a USB 3.0 port on the front of your PC. That's the only way I was able to solve the ghosting. And if I put too many USB devices onto my uh, motherboard, there would just be more ghosting problems. I have to unplug some of them. And it really shows that they kind of just don't care about the X56. There are joysticks that I've used like the TWCS and the T16000M or the Thrustmaster HOTAS for the, I think the Airbus, it was the Airbus model or whatever. I used that and I didn't get any of these issues. I could use, and I'm getting a Gladiator Next now soon and hopefully that doesn't have similar issues because I don't think it should. There shouldn't be a ghosting issue with these products and I mean, I just find it kind of odd that they would make you 
buy extra equipment even after you paid $250 for this piece of kit. At least state it somewhere that you might need to buy this stuff. I mean, sure, you could do some research before you buy this product, and that's what you're doing by watching this video. But ultimately, this product should not have this kind of problem. This should be solved. This shouldn't be some kind of issue that has to be dealt with. I personally had to go through three or four RMIs with Logitech just to get a functional unit, and I never actually ended up getting a functional unit that did not have any issues whatsoever. Logitech's RMA process was easy enough, and their support was excellent and very kind and helpful. But I should not have to RMA something three to four times only to have a dysfunctional product. You should absolutely be getting a product that works out of the factory. I mean, sometimes you have random defects out of the factory, which is understandable. Some, some of them don't come out right, and of course you can get those replaced and get one that actually works. But the amount of issues that come from the X56 and how many RMAs have to be done on it on a constant basis really isn't acceptable in my opinion. And it should definitely be changed and Logitech has to do something about this. They, I don't know how they're getting away with selling such a joystick. Probably because there's no com competition at this price point for the amount of switches that you actually get. Anyways, I wanted to conclude this video by stating the following. If you're absolutely in need of a joystick that has many different switches, buttons, hats, and whatnot, this joystick is ultimately the one you will have to buy for that, at this price point at least. It is with a heavy heart that I have to say this, and honestly, there are many other alternatives to the X56 Hotest. And my first option I would be recommending is for you to get a TWCS throttle alongside a VKB Gladiator Next. These two products probably last you much longer than the X56 and you will probably not have to RMA them multiple times. As the Gladiator Next, according to many people on Reddit for example, they say it's a very well built product and the TWCS throttle is also pretty decently built. You can also go for the T16000M FCS Hotest which I've mentioned, which is a good product, but I do not like Thrustmaster's warranty, at least uh, within North America. because. They do provide a two-year warranty to their European customers, while it varies wildly for the rest of the world, such as the US and Canada, where you only get one year of coverage rather than two, which I find is kind of scummy because Logitech does a better job of it and provides a two-year warranty wherever you are in the world. However, do not take the, don't do not take this like directly from me. Make sure you read the fine print for the warranty for your respective country from Thrustmaster and Logitech, as it may vary. Uh, something you should be aware of if you end up buying a Thrustmaster Hotest. Just make sure you know that if you live in North America, you're only getting one year. There is also the much older kind of design Logitech X52 and Pro variant, which are also SciTech products. And I've heard they had less issues than the X56 did, but it is still a older design and it still has the same kind of issues that you'll end up seeing in the X56 sometimes. So it may be another roll of the dice, another Put it up to luck. Ultimately, the best thing I can recommend as of right now is just to go with the TWCS throttle and Gladiator Next from VKB. If you have even more money than that though to spend, go for some Verpal products or VKB uh, Gunfighter. It'd be a much better investment than going for something like a Thrustmaster Warthog at that point. All right, thank you all for watching this video. If you have any questions pertaining to my experience with the Logitech X56, please feel free to leave a comment below and I will do my best to answer it for you. As always, thank you so much for watching and have yourself a good one.